Hey traders, stock market fans, and investing enthusiasts from around the world. My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and this video we are simply discussing is the Slack IPO worth making an investment in, or is it a pure gamble? Let's chat about it right now. All right, folks, so we're really just going to dive right into this and start looking at my overall thoughts on the Slack IPO. First and foremost, I do have a Slack channel, um, not only for real life trading, but also for other various companies and programs and things that I've worked on either as a contractor or just a team member or a consultant of some kind. I do use Slack and here's the challenge. It's very good as a free product. Now, the premium service I've never personally used. There are many useful things and useful tools for it. What I will say is it is relatively expensive per person for the premium product. It is not cheap uh, and it depends on how large your organization is. If your organization is really small and really cash flow heavy, you could probably use the premium app. If you do have a larger organization and you're looking at spending some money on the premium product, it can cost some serious change. Here's the thing. My thoughts is it's going to be a lot like Dropbox. Now the Dropbox IPO was interesting because it does and did what a lot of the tech IPOs do. What I'm going to do is look at some patterns and kind of show you what previous IPOs did in a similar industry or somewhat similar so that we can go in and kind of get an idea of what uh, Slack will most likely do when it IPOs. Now, it doesn't mean that it will do it for sure, but it means that it absolutely could and I'll be keeping a very close eye on this to occur. So the Dropbox IPO, why is Slack similar to the Dropbox? Well, Slack, is free to use. So is Dropbox, right? You have free things you can use on Dropbox, you have free things you can use on Slack. There are a lot of competition. And the competition that I'm specifically referring to, I don't think I spelled that correct, is looking at Discord and Telegram. So if you have a Discord channel, which pretty much everyone does, or a Telegram, that is direct competition to Slack. There's also Group Me, which I've used before, uh, a lot smaller, of course, not nearly as robust as Discord and Telegram, but Slack is useful. I, I forget the, I think there's a scene in Silicon Valley at some point where someone's talking about, what is Slack? You know, is it, is it an email service? Is it a text message service? Is it a social media? What is it? So there are other, really nice competitors. I mean, you could probably throw Facebook in that in that group. I mean, Facebook has groups, Facebook has private messages, private walls, you can message people, but it's definitely not nearly as good for teams, I would say. I do kind of agree on that. It's more for like a community or someone where there's a one specific public figure. But anyway, if we're looking at Dropbox, number one, the first thing to take away is once at IPO, so if you're getting in before the IPO, right, you're most likely an accredited investor, and I totally think that this is what Slack's gonna do. So they're going to IPO at a specific price. I really don't know the price or the valuation at this particular point in time. But what I can say is it most likely, if you're getting in before the launch, before it hits the actual NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, it most likely will be up. Most of these tech stocks work that way. If you get in early enough and you're an accredited investor and you can buy enough into your position, buy some serious shares, you can um, uh, you know, unload those shares pretty much at market open for a gain. And that's exactly what Dropbox did. If you are looking at getting into an IPO on Slack, I can almost guarantee you that you'll be given the shot to get in below the low of the first day's IPO price. So here on Dropbox, the very first day, the range uh, was all the way up to 3160 and the low is 2784. One of my personal favorite plays is once that first day or two candle can price comes in, I look for the trap below that particular price to then buy. 
I look for people who are getting in at open and then they're looking at um, you know, getting out. Their stop is right below the low and the market drives it down, stops them out. So here's another example of that. And then the stock pops. So the low of the second day was 27.75, nine cents lower than the first day. And that would have been a great spot to buy, just right below. I mean, your, your entry could have been 27.83. And then over here, same exact thing. Right when it breaks the low, that's when you get in. And my thought is, I think you're gonna have the chance to wait. If you're like, all right, well, that's just Dropbox. Well, here's DocuSign. DOCU, this is also a very recent tech IPO. Now DocuSign, you can see, pretty much immediately ran up. And the thing is, it's not like you're gonna miss it if you get an open on Slack and it just runs to the moon. I mean, you're gonna have a retracement. You're gonna have a pullback of some sort before it just continually takes off. And even on this particular one, you did not get a chance to get in at the low uh, at the present time, like the day after. There are some very easy signals like this morning star reversal or this retest gap right here, or you know just simply the breakout above this resistance. Some good signals that you could have gotten in DocuSign a little early and rode that wave up. But what you will notice is it did eventually come back down below its IPO low just to trap people and then bounce. And DocuSign, again, a relatively recent IPO in the tech industry. Again, I know it's not the exact same sector. I realize that, but look at how beautiful that played out just right below its previous IPO. So yeah, you had to wait an entire six to seven months for that to occur, but you were able to get in at a little bit of a lower price. And having that information, sure, you could have wrote it up, made some money on the upside, and then as it pulled back and as it pulled back into these lows, you were buying and able to give another shot. What if you're thinking to yourself, well, I think uh, Slack is more of like a social media play than a uh, tech stock, tech IPO. Okay, well, let's go look at Twitter. So Twitter, and we're gonna have to zoom back a little bit because now Twitter has been on the market for a while. So if we zoom back to its present day, check it out. I'm still 100% correct. Twitter opens, flushes lower than the, than the low of the IPO low, and then gets a bounce, and then goes back below its IPO low, only to bounce again, right? So uh, Twitter, I mean, Twitter did that. Let's go look at, well, I think we all know what happened to Snapchat. Snapchat was massively overvalued anyway, but the same thing applies on Snapchat. Every time it made a new low, it started bouncing uh, and, and gave some traders an opportunity to get in lower. A lot of people bought Snapchat way, way, way too high, and you can see that Snapchat just got absolutely demolished, as it should. It should not have had um, a multi, almost $20 billion valuation, which is like four times more than SpaceX, which sends rockets to space, and then they return. It was more, more than that. Filters, okay? So now Snapchat's back down at 844. That's the... One of the most recent uh, IPO videos I did was on Snapchat. Feel free to go check it out. In fact, I'll link it to you right here. You can go check that out on uh, my website and on my YouTube channel, but my spot on, my call is spot on on Snapchat. It's not gonna go that high, it's gonna go a little bit lower. I think Slack is going to do something very similar. I mean, if you're gonna hop over here to Spotify, Spotify, very recent tech IPO, kind of social media play, kind of, you'll notice again, it gapped, it ran down, trapping people. Anyone who bought on that day, they got stopped out the very second day. It rallied and it ran, and then it eventually came below its IPO price to start slowly consolidating and bouncing. There are numerous examples of this on the IPO world, even if they're stocks that are not uh, even similarly relevant. IQ, so again, you can see on IQ, First day, gaps up, trades down. Day four, takes out the IPO low, um, IPO day one low. 1544, low of the scandal, 1530. So we're talking 14 cents, that's when everyone gets trapped and that was the time to buy. And then even if you missed that entire run up, okay, check it out, you got another shot at it because it did come back below its previous IPO low. That's IQ. 
Uh, I can do this all day. I can do this all day. Pivotal software, PVTL. Here's another one, right? Stock traded down, came in to its uh, first IPO low and ran to the moon. Again, similar to DocuSign. Never giving you that second day, but again, it retested, broke out. Very similar pattern to stocks that do not retest their IPO, you know, low, the first low of the day on day one. Good move on Pivotal Software. You'd have had to make some quick trades and some good gains, but obviously earnings, that was a gap and go. Trades down, and what does Pivotal do? Ends up trading below its previous IPO low and then bouncing. Uh, my buddy Highland, he's all upset. What are you upset about, Highland? Uh, let's go look at one more, Redfin, RDFN. RDFN is uh, another stock, let's kind of zoom on over here. So again, IPO low, it opened, it ran, and then you'll notice it traded right back down to those IPO lows, back over here, back over here, and eventually takes out the lows uh, to go just a little bit lower. But if you're looking at it, I mean, great spots to buy Redfin, even if you miss the first few day run up, very frequently. I mean, so far, every single IPO we've looked at is gonna come back and has come back below its IPO low price, including Facebook. And the only one, the only tech IPO that I can think of that hasn't done that uh, is Google. I think Google IPO'd and never came back below its previous IPO low. But again, that is, you know, that's a while ago. Uh, everyone would like to caught Google. Eventbrite has done it. So Eventbrite has broken its first day IPO low by a few pennies, ran higher, made a higher high. This is when all the newbies got on, by the way, all the people without proper education. They got in right there, stock sells off hard, and create, creates this new low where you can start, uh, again, kind of buying that support. I do like Eventbrite longer term. I am, I am in some shares on Eventbrite. I mean, I can continue going, even with food companies. El Pollo Loco has done it, right? Ticker symbol L-O-C-O. Not even the remotely same industry as Slack. But you'll notice it ran up. A lot of people are like, oh man, I'm missing it. Let me get in. So they start buying up here. And then what eventually happens? It does come back below its IPO low. Gaps down really traps people and then trades nice and sideways. I'll do one more just to really drive the point home. I know what I'm talking about. I know these patterns. I've done the research. Here's take two interactive. Um, sorry, not take two interactive. We could do that one as well. That one's really farther away. I'm at Twilio, T-W-L-O. Twilio, oh, this is a beautiful example. But Twilio, again, huge run up and you're absolutely able to catch some of these moves. I mean, if it doesn't break that IPO low, within the first week or so, you have the opportunity. I mean, here's a pennant pattern, beautiful bullish gap and go on this day, gap and go on this day. Um, you get the S curve, bounce, S curve, breakout. So even if you're buying Twilio up at 45 with a breakout, I mean, you're still catching a good move. But what ends up happening? Well, if we zoom out, check it out. Twilio went from 25 a share to 70 a share and then all the way back down back just barely below its IPO low. So here you go, IPO low right there, boom, trap. That's where you're buying, boom, boom, boom. And that particular move is just set in stone as a really good indication that people got trapped. And then obviously, I think we all know what happened to Twilio. That stock just went banana sandwich. Thing just tearing up the screen. Uh, we're talking $110 a share right now. So you catch some of these moves. Again, it's like if you want to invest in a company that you like, you know how they make money. If you use Slack, if you like Slack, which I do, I most likely will be trading it. But bottom line, it is a free software, uh, very similar to Spotify. I mean, Spotify offers some free services, very similar to Dropbox, which offers free services, very similar to DocuSign, which offers free services, uh, Snapchat, obviously, Twitter, uh, they, you know, Facebook, they all offer free services. They all have services you can pay for. But here was the analysis on TWLO. Just so you're not think, you know, thinking I'm just talking out of my face. TWLO, uh, pre-earnings analysis. So this was way back when, 13th of February, 2018. 
And this is the bottom of the barrel, right at that support, in bullish at $24.99 with a protective put at $23.39. And uh, gapping due to earnings, nice bullish gap. I think this stock company is, was in a bullish buy low, sell high accumulation area. And yeah, it was a really nice gap on Twilio. I thought it would gap up, trade down, and then continue higher, but honestly, it just gapped up and kept running. It never really even pulled back, which was good for those people who were in it. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Slack. I am very confident that it will open and it's either gonna trade higher and then break and go below its IPO low or open and then begin to immediately run down for a few days, trapping some folks, consolidating, and giving you some time to more or less wait it out, give it some time, let the dust settle. If it never breaks its IPO low, cool. Let's go bullish for a few days to a few weeks and then get out, take some gains, let it trade all the way back down to its IPO low, which it most likely will, and then bounce. That's my thoughts. If you have any other learning that you wanna do, I teach all this stuff for free. Ladies and gentlemen, hop over to reallifetrading.com, teach you how to use patterns, use candlesticks, use the past performance of a stock and a company to at least get an idea and a generalization of what it may do. Teach all of it for free. Go to reallifetrading.com, click on trading for beginners. If you know what you're doing, click on intermediate, advanced, day trading. We have futures, we have eBooks, we have all kinds of great stuff. Articles up the yin yang, we got videos. We got just so much on this website. Check it out, learn from me. I would love to teach you all the information that I know, impart with you over a decade of wisdom. You are incredible. Thank you for being here and until next time, love life, live life and trade it, bye.